like to take a moment to thank our listeners sincerely for your support of Honest News Network Ministry. If you're interested in supporting this ministry, please use the information provided. Thank you. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for your love. We thank you, Lord, for helping us to stay in your love, to abide in your love, to be kept by your love, Lord, in this hour. We pray, Lord, that your people will take heed, Lord, to this message. More than ever, they will understand, Lord, your nature. They'll understand that you are love and that you are not a God that's afar off. If that if we're separate from you, Lord, it's because of our sin. That's the only thing that separates us from you, Lord. Sin. We pray, Father, that your people, those, Lord, that have felt that you've been distant or feel like there's a division or some kind of separation between them and you, that they will come to an understanding, Lord, that it's on their part, not yours. It's not your will, Lord, that your people would be separated from you. Your heart, Lord, is to reconcile even the world to yourself. We pray that you bless and anoint as we minister your word, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I'd like to begin with a song, a real quick song, but it has tremendous meaning. Touching Jesus, that's all that really matters. And your life, We'll never be the same. There is only one way to touch him. You must believe when you call upon his name. Touching Jesus, that's all that really matters. And your life will never be the same. There is only one way to touch him. You must believe when you call upon his name. Touching Jesus. What a novel idea. When's the last time you touched him? When's the last time he touched you? Not talking about a a mortal. We're not talking about a man. We're talking about the Christ, the eternal Son of God. The one that came down from heaven, left the ivory palace, as it were, left the glory 
of the Father, left his own glory with the Father. I'm not talking about a king on this earth with great honor and great glory. Speaking of the one that never had a beginning, will never have an end. The blessed people, the one that is the altogether lovely one, the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valleys, the bright in the morning star, the fairest of 10,000 to our soul. In fact, if you continue to get to know him, you'll become a person with a loss of words. Joy unspeakable. Anybody listening? You will lose a sense of being able to even speak because he's so awesome. He's beyond words, people. He is the word. But he's beyond. You'll lose the sense to be able to even express who he is. You'll stand in awe. Are you listening? Or you'll fall in awe before him. And yet, listen to me. He's not unapproachable. For a few moments, I'd like to speak to you on the subject, the untouchables. The untouchables. I want you to see the contrast between the untouchables of today and the Lord Jesus Christ, who was approachable and touchable. Listen to me. In the mafia, there were those that were considered the untouchables. There was a mobster king that was the untouchable. That nobody could bring him down. Nobody could approach him. Nobody could touch him. Listen to me. In all his power and glory, he's just the opposite. He's not corrupt. And he's not untouchable. Anybody listening? He is touchable. You have to understand who he is first. Why did this woman that touched him, that we're going to read about, why did she, why was she so scared and afraid and terrified and trembling? Let's, let's read. Mark chapter 5, beginning with verse 25. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind, and touched his garment. For she said, If I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed 
of that plague. Jesus immediately, knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? In other place, well, just the next verse down, his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? Who touched me? Who touched my clothes? Now, the the untouchables would be very angry, very bitter, if you tried to touch them, if you tried to get close to them. There are people like that. Don't touch me. Leave me alone. Don't you know who I am? Don't you, don't, don't you, don't you get it? I'm untouchable. I'm better than you. But that's not who Jesus is. He said, who touched me? He looked round about to see her that had done this thing this terrible thing, this awesome thing. She wasn't touching a man, people. She was touching heaven. She was touching the very God of heaven. That virtue did not come from a man. That virtue came from the son of man, the one that came down from heaven. That healing power didn't come from a man. Just like today, those that throng these mega ministers, these ministers of the health and wealth prosperity movement, the the untouchables. Anybody know what I'm talking about? The ministers today, they're untouchable, they think. They they do everything they can to separate themselves from the people like they're better, like they can't be touched. And they're just as corrupt as the mob, as the mafia. They're greedy dogs. They can never have enough. And they're both men and women. Are you listening? I've heard stories about those that have worked with the Copelands. And it is a unspoken but known thing. You don't speak to them. Employees are not allowed to speak to the Copelands when they walk through their empire. Anybody listening? That's just one of many of the empires today of the prosperity movement. But the idea is we are incorruptible. We are untouchable. In fact, we are God. Yeah, they look at them as gods. They treat them like they're gods. They worship them. They venerate them. Even in this charismatic prosperity movement today, they are famed. They're famous. This is completely contrary to Jesus. In fact, there were times, many times, when Jesus would say to them, don't publicize me. Don't go out and tell everybody. Keep it to yourself. Why? Because he was not about fame and fortune. 
He wasn't about making a name for himself. Amen? He didn't need the publicity. He's God, people. He wasn't interested in multitudes thronging him and following him. He was interested in those that would take him at his word, those that believed him, those that would obey him, those that would listen. He even turned to his disciples. Immediate 12 and said, will you also go away? When all the other disciples fled and forsook him. Who can hear this? They were offended at the word. Multitudes followed Jesus, people, for what they could get from him. Anybody listening? But they could care less who he was. They didn't want to get to know him. They didn't care about his person. They didn't care about a relationship with him. Even Simon Peter said, I don't know the man. Amen. How many of you are really interested in getting to know him? Being touched by the virtue of the Son of God. How many really want to know the Lord? You really desire to know him? He's not untouchable. Amen. He's not corrupt. He's no respecter of persons. You can touch him. This woman, no doubt, had heard about the others that had touched him and been healed. Let's read about that in Matthew 14, 35. And when the men of that place had knowledge of him, they sent out into all that country round about and brought unto him all that were diseased and besought him that they might only touch the hem of his garment. And as many as touched were made perfectly whole. The scripture says that this woman that touched him, she heard about him. She heard about him. What does it mean? It means she heard about these others that have touched him and were made whole. And she said, if I might but touch him, I too will be made whole. Amen. I'm glad that Jesus Christ is not untouchable. Amen, people. You can touch him by faith. You don't have to touch him physically. You can touch him by faith. You can touch him for someone else too. Amen. When's the last time you touched him? When's the last time he touched you? He's not untouchable. Amen, people. He's not untouchable. Jesus said, I perceive virtue has gone out of me. She stood trembling. She was trembling. Because she felt in her body she'd been made whole. This is not some kind of put on people. These fakes and frauds today like Benny Hinn, people falling over, that's not God. This woman was trembling when she was made whole. Anybody listening? I'm not talking about some fake or fraud or put on. I'm talking about the God of heaven. This was the eternal son of God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Quit your complaining. Quit your murmuring and touch him. Amen. Stop making excuses and touch him. Stop talking about all your problems and touch him. As many as touched him were made perfectly, perfectly whole. Stop making excuses. Amen. Praise the Lord. The man that was at the pool 
making excuses. Jesus said to him, Wilt thou be made whole? Yeah, if somebody would get me down into that pool. Every time I try to get into that pool, someone gets in before me. He, di he didn't ask him that. He didn't say, would you like me to help you get in the pool? He asked him a question. Wilt thou be made whole? How many of you right now, under the sound of my voice, you're allowing a separation between you and the Lord because of an excuse? You're making excuses. All you're going to do is touch him by faith, and he will heal you. He will make you perfectly whole. He's no respecter of persons. He's waiting for you to touch him. He's waiting for you to reach out by faith and touch him. What are you waiting for? Seriously, what are you waiting for, people? He's not untouchable. He's not unapproachable. Amen. But you got to come by faith. You got to believe. Luke 24, verse 36. And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them, and he saith unto them, Peace be unto you. But they were terrified and affrightened, and supposed they had seen a spirit. And he said unto them, Why are you troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Listen to what he says. Handle me. Touch me. Handle me. Does that sound like he's untouchable? Does that sound like he is high and mighty and he doesn't want to be touched and he thinks he's better than you? Listen, people. He gave up all of glory. He went to the cross so you could touch him. He's not untouchable. He, the Son of God, came down where you and I are for the very reason, for the very purpose so we could touch him, so that he would touch us. We need his touch. We need him to help us people. Quit trying to reach out and touch men. Quit trying to touch the anointing on other men's ministries. Stop trying to reach out and touch even the anointing on Brother Joseph's ministry and reach out and touch him for yourself. He's waiting for you. Handle me, he said, and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as you see me have. Amen, people. Do you hear the Lord? Touch me. Handle me. Even right now. Even though Jesus has gone to be with the Father, he's still saying the same thing to you and I today. Touch me. Handle me. You won't handle him in the physical. You won't touch his physical body. Listen to me. By faith, that same virtue of the Son of God is flowing if you will but touch him. That same virtue, that same healing power. Oh, my Lord and my God. The scripture says because the Jews did not mix faith with the word, it was not profitable to them. Same thing with you today. If you don't mix faith with the word, it's not going to benefit you. You must believe. Without faith, it's impossible to please God, people. He that comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Anybody listening? 
When's the last time you reached out, you stretched out your hands towards him in faith, felt his presence? When's the last time you felt after him? Paul the Apostle talked about feeling after him. When's the last time you got your feelers up? My pastor used to say, do you have your feelers up? Are you feeling after God? He's there. He's not afar off. Dear God, people, by the blood of Jesus Christ, we can come boldly, boldly, not into the holy place, but into the holy of holies, into the very divine presence of almighty God, people. He'll make you free. Amen. Where the spirit of the Lord there, there is liberty. Hallelujah. Are you bound today? Are you sick in body? Do you have need? Touch him. Touch him. Praise the Lord. Touch him. Even as I'm preaching right now, as I'm ministering to you right now, I can feel his presence. I can sense the anointing upon me. Touch him, people. Right now, did you know right now, if you're sick in your body, right now as I'm preaching, if you need the Holy Ghost, and you do, if you're not filled with the Spirit, you need to be filled with the Spirit. Right now, even as we read in the book of Acts, as the apostles were preaching the gospel, the anointing would come and people would be filled with the Spirit as they were preaching. God hasn't changed. What he was doing, he's still doing. What he was saying, he's still saying. Jesus is still saying, who touched me? Remember what they said to Jesus? The multitudes are thronging you. What do you mean, who touched you? No, he said, I perceive somebody touched me. Virtue went out from me. And the woman stood trembling behind him. He turned around, looked at her and said, Woman, your faith has made you whole. Daughter, your faith has made you whole. Go in peace. When's the last time you touched him? When's the last time you trembled in his presence? I feel his presence right now saying this to you. Paul the Apostle said, I didn't come to you with enticing words of men's wisdom. He said, I was with you in much trembling, fear and trembling. I didn't come to you with enticing words of men's wisdom like the ministers of Satan today, people, the untouchables but in demonstration of the power of the Holy Ghost that your faith would not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. How many today are trying to get to touch, get to see, get close enough to a minister that's not even a minister of God? The untouchables. I remember... And I played the video for you one time or a couple of times where Benny Hinn said, get that little child out of here. Get him off the stage. Get him away from me. Does that sound like Jesus to you? Jesus said, suffer the little ones to come unto me. It was the disciples that were saying, get these children out of here. Anybody listening to this preacher? I'm telling you, he's not untouchable. Amen. And his promises are not unattainable. You can attain. You can attain to full perfection. To sit with him in his throne. To be made perfect. To be faultless. He's able to make you faultless. Innocent, as if you'd never sinned. Righteous, his righteousness. Justified, 
just as if you'd never sinned. Anybody listening? It's one thing to be saved. It's another thing to be a saint, people. Saints don't sin. Oh, Brother Joseph, you sound untouchable. Listen to me. Jesus didn't go sitting down with sinners, as they say today. He didn't go out of his way to sit with sinners. They went out of their way to sit with him. And in his mercy, he didn't get up and walk away. In his mercy, he didn't get up and go sit down at another table. And when he was invited to sit with the Pharisees, he even went in among the self-righteous. But Jesus didn't go out of his way to sit with sinners. He was separate from sinners, the scripture says. Amen. Even though he was holy, even though he was the most pure man that ever walked the earth, he was not untouchable. Even though he was heaven's gift, he was not untouchable. In fact, think about those that touched him like Judas that kissed his face. Think about those that slapped his face. Think about those that spit on him, spat on him. Think about those that handled him and touched him when they crucified him, drove nails into him. They were touching him, but it didn't benefit them. Amen? What about when the man stuck the spear in his side? And the blood came out, the water came out and touched him. He said, surely this was the son of God. When's the last time you touched him? Seriously. If you need healing, deliverance, quit looking to man. Quit it. Stop looking for some minister that's untouchable to meet your need and touch him who is touchable. Amen. Praise the Lord. If I might but touch some part of his garment, if I might but touch some part of his robe, I know I'll be healed. My sins are forgiven. If I might touch him, I know I'll be whole. If I might but touch some part of his garment, if I might but touch some part of his robe, I know I'll be healed. My sins are forgiven. If I might touch him, I know I'll be whole. Amen. Praise the Lord. When's the last time you trembled in his presence? When's the last time you felt in your body you've been healed? Amen, people. The Lord is touching in this hour because there are those that are touching him. How about it? How about you? Are you ready to touch him? What are you waiting for? How long are you going to wait before you touch him? How long are you going to wait? Because I'm going to tell you, there are many in this hour that are untouchable. Let me tell you this. Those today, the movie stars and all, all these famous people today that are untouchable, Satan keeps them untouchable so that they can't get saved. If you could reach these untouchables today, you might be able to bring them to Jesus. But Satan keeps a barrier between you and them. That's why you can't, you and I can't go and speak to one of these famous people. Satan doesn't want you to be able to reach them. He wants to use them to influence you, but he doesn't want them inf influenced. Those like Joel Steen today and all these, uh, these famous ministers, 
Satan does not want a real minister to be able to come in contact with them, so they stay untouchable. In fact, I've heard them say many times. Here, I've heard Joel Osteen say it. I don't, I don't spend time with people that are haters or negative or don't speak good things into my ministry. You see, they surround themselves with only those that agree with them. Anybody listening? And yet they're corrupt, just as corrupt as Al Capone. They're just as corrupt as the mob. They are the mob. They are as crooked. They are as greedy as, as any mobster. And during Trump's presidency, they surrounded him. Where are they now? Where's their voice now? They don't have their kingpin in the White House anymore. Is that the problem? Listen to me, people. The mob. The mob. The corrupt. They're untouchable. Someone like Jeff Bezos or uh, uh, any of them, Bill Gates, they're untouchable. And Satan keeps them untouchable while they influence the world around them. But he keeps them untouchable because he doesn't want them to be converted. Did you know that Saul was untouchable? Yeah, he was untouchable. He was one of the untouchables, corrupt, right? Pharisee of the Pharisees. But Jesus touched him. And he was trembling. He fell on his face before God. He was transfigured. He was changed. Transformed. Shouldn't say he was transfigured. He was transformed. Converted. And Paul the Apostle became one of the most touchable men on the earth. Don't get it twisted, people. Jesus Christ is not untouchable, and his ministers are not untouchable. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Don't be deceived by the untouchables today. Go to him that is touchable. Go to him that is attainable. Go to him, the blessed of heaven. Go to him. Go to him, his majesty. You know, in the Old Testament, Esther was terrified of her own husband when he was in the royal throne. She said, if I perish, I perish. That was her husband. But in his office, in his position, She was no different than anybody else. Anybody listening? And she knew that she had to be able to touch the top of the scepter to be accepted of him. And he said to Esther, approach me. Come to me. She was was not approaching him as she would when he wasn't in the throne. And I'm telling you, you don't have to be afraid, timid, shrinking back from Jesus Christ in the throne. He said, come boldly to the throne of grace, that you may obtain mercy to find help in a time of need. Because of his blood, people, because of faith, we can come boldly to the Lord. Why do you stand to fire off? Why are you shrinking back? I've preached out my heart to you. I'm trying to help you understand that Jesus Christ is waiting on you to come to him. How long must he wait? He's waiting on you. You think you're waiting for him. He said, draw near to me, I'll draw nigh to you. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it backwards. Draw near to God, and he'll draw near to you. 
He's waiting for you to draw near to him. Don't let these words slip. Don't let these words just bypass you. You know, I'm going to say something to you, people. How many of you right now listening, you're just waiting for the next message and you're not listening to the current message that's playing right now, that you're listening to right now. You're waiting. Well, I can't wait to the next message. Can't wait to the next message. Dear God, what about the one you're listening to right now? When are you going to do something with it? When are you going to do it? When are you going to touch the Lord? When are you going to seek him? When are you going to do what you're hearing? Oh, I just can't wait to the next message. Don't be foolish. Don't be foolish. Obey now. Seek him now while he may be found of you. Touch him now. Don't put it off another moment. Amen. Praise the Lord. Oh, I can't wait to the next message. Can't wait to hear Brother Joseph preach again. If you'll touch the Lord and get what you need, maybe he could use you to touch and help somebody else. Amen. To be a vessel for to be used as a conduit that God can flow through you. Amen, people. How many of you right now, God could use you, but he can't because you won't let him. You won't let him use you. In fact, you have become untouchable to him. You built the wall between you and him. He's waiting for you to take it down. He's waiting for you to seek him. He's waiting for you to repent. He's waiting for you to humble yourself. All you right now that are listening, that are waiting for the Lord to touch you, he's waiting for you to touch him. Amen. Praise the Lord. You didn't know, but this could be the last message Brother Joseph ever shares. Amen. The Lord could take me home today. He could take me to glory today. Then you say, oh, well, Brother Joseph, thank God I have the thousands of messages you left behind. What about the one you're listening to right now? When are you going to do something with it? When are you going to mix faith with the word you're hearing, the message you're hearing? When are you going to quit making excuses? Amen. The Old Testament, God told the man of God to tell the people, go up and take your inheritance. And they didn't listen. They didn't obey. When are you going to go up and take your inheritance? When are you going to seek the Lord? When are you going to take the whole armor of God onto you? When are you going to take it, people? When? What are you waiting for? The anointing, the power of God is for you and for your children. The blessing of God is for you and your children. The Holy Ghost is for you and your children. When are you going to take it? Take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand in the evil day. What are you waiting for? You know, when the scripture says that she made herself ready, the bride, his wife made herself ready, the word ready has to do with a provision. He made the provision. She had to apply it. Amen. That's how she got ready. She applied what was made available to her. Everything we have need of has been provided. All we got to do is take it, apply it, put it on. Put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. Make no provision for the flesh. When are you going to be a doer of the word and not just a hear only people? Amen. He's waiting for you. God bless you. We've got the power in the name of Jesus. We've got the power in the name of the 